This is the evergreen forest. Quiet, peaceful, serene. That is until Burt Raccoon wakes up. The Raccoons. We created this out of uh, the Ottawa Valley. Um, and made it uh, into one of the successes of uh, television around the world. Somewhere on board that train is $10 million, and it's going to be mine! We've got to stop that train before it hits the bridge! I may never recover from this! It's a wonderful part of my life. Uh, I, I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be associated with the people who helped make it happen. Something strange is going on here. We gotta help them. There is a certain sense of satisfaction and, and in many ways, I guess, good fortune that I feel. Yeah. I think many of uh, my colleagues in law are envious uh, that I've ended up in animation. Uh, first of all, it's a time when lawyers are not having as happy a time in the practice as they might have five or ten years ago. And uh, I'm constantly told by colleagues and former classmates that uh, they really envy the fact that I'm in animation. Sheldon uh, made it his, uh, his goal, as mine was, to see if we could get raccoons together as a, as a special. At that time, there was no concept of having a series or no, I guess, I wouldn't want to say no vision, because I think any time you enter into something and you, you look for the, for the, the down-the-road uh, uh, possibilities, but certainly uh, that, uh, our, our main goal at that point was just trying to get the, the half-hour television special off the ground, and we were like blinders on, you know, this, is, this, is, this was our goal. After we produced the first Raccoons uh, special, which was called The Christmas Raccoons, uh, we sold it to CBC. There was tremendous audience reaction, uh, which caused us to immediately plan to do a second special, which we did in 1981, called The Raccoons on Ice. And then I began looking at uh, how programs were costed and to test certain theories about uh, uh, achieving reasonable costs, we did two specials at the same time in 1983, and that then in turn gave rise to a series in 1985. It became a, it became a, a life. It, it, uh, Raccoons was a life onto itself. It wasn't a project that I would get up in the morning and go to work and then come home at 5 o'clock. Uh, it uh, consumed me for, and many other people. In 1985, we looked for a facility to set up an animation studio to service raccoons and eventually uh, found one uh, in the Hintonburg area of Ottawa. This entertainment smash hit has now become big business, and I do mean big business. Raccoon programs and licensed raccoon products, everything from plush toys to puzzles, storybooks, slippers, and even Halloween costumes are being sold around the world. It is indeed a privilege for me as Canada's Minister of Communication to declare the Hinton Animation Studios officially open. <laughs> I think we got something here. And I do so by cutting this film, which is original, Raccoon's film. I think it's the big bonanza! <laughs> because of the nature of animation, uh, it's a medium that always attracts uh, a number of people that uh, have an interest in it as an art form, and uh, we have been no exception. We've always attracted uh, some very high-profile visitors. Uh, Early on in our uh, development and evolution, I remember that uh, David Peterson, when he was Premier of Ontario, uh, came through the studio, and uh, we've had a large range of uh, people of profile, all of whom have one common interest, and that is animation. And then you start the action. Yeah, and it's all penciled out in blue. 
and just make rough sketches because that's... Um, when it turned into a series, I became sort of a liaison between producers and directors on it and uh, worked as the story editor, which was fun because they were doing stories for prime time, which was fairly new for animation to be in prime time. And uh, the, uh, we always dealt with issues and we dealt with uh, you know, A and B plots and uh, we had these uh, great cast of characters. Well, I'll be. What is it, Ralph? It's an offer. An offer? To play for the Yankees? <laughs> No, for a job as editor of a newspaper. Oh, that's wonderful, Ralph. Why, you've talked about doing that for years. Well, it's a position I've always wanted, but I never thought I'd get a chance at it. It does mean moving to the city. City? I've been selling the raccoons for many, many years now. I didn't start off with it. I took it over from another distributor. But we've done really well. We've sold the series, I think there are 65 episodes altogether, uh, around the world. You mean to tell me I lost my treasure and got myself wet for nothing? Uh, sorry about that, Pop. Ah! And if I'm in England or Belgium or France or the United States, I mean, pretty well every country you go to, Germany, Italy, Spain, there's the raccoons. Alors tu veux dire que j'ai laissé engloutir mon trésor et que je me suis mouillé pour rien du tout? Uh, désolé, je te demande pardon. Acaso me estás diciendo, hijo mío, que perdí mi tesoro y que me mojé por nada? Ay, lo siento, papi. Es la pis de la dio, tieja, sato cisabro, que hay una musquilla, tontípota. Desde que os tiene apathes, baba. The characters came alive. They they were no longer black and white, bad and good. They were uh, very well rounded. You never, you could never really predict how one of them was going to uh, uh, behave in a certain mode. Whether Cyril was going to be always the bad guy, or whether you'd get a twist at the end of the story. And I suspect that that probably had more to do with the fascination that, that Canadians and Americans and Brits and people all over the world had with the characters. They they weren't your typical animated characters. I mean, they they took on a life of their own. So, uh, <laughs> that's life, huh? Well, <laughs> it'll look a lot more like it when it's finished. I've been meaning to ask you, Cedric, uh, what's it supposed to be, anyway? It represents the progress of civilization through time and space. I remember sitting around uh, writing meetings where people would put on the voices of whether they'd be Cyril Sneer or, oh, now hear this, here's a line for you or Burt Raccoon or Schaefer, and they would actually project themselves into the, into, the, uh, into the voices in order to get the right nuance, the right line. No one interrupts my television show! No one! You know, I've been asked many times whether the, uh, the characters in the Raccoons are, uh, are bear any similarity to anybody I may know or may, may have known or didn't know. Um, I should probably take the Fifth Amendment on the grounds that it may incriminate me. I wanted to push that, you blundering bacon buffoon! I mean, if anybody was based on Cyril Sneer, they probably would, uh, I'm not sure I could, uh, I could duck that one. Where'd you get this trash-talking time machine anyway? If I had to do it again, I'm not sure if I've got the energy, but, uh, and things go on, you get, you get other interests in life, um, but uh, it was certainly a, a fabulous, uh, fabulous experience, a fabulous once-in-a-lifetime experience for me. That it was like a dream for 11 years, a hard dream to live because of the work that was in, entailed, but certainly a, uh, a dream nonetheless. Winning this award tells us that our readers think we're doing a good job. And that doesn't mean just the editor. It's all of us, the team that puts this paper together. We promise to keep on doing our best for everyone in the evergreen forest. Thank you all very much. What Raccoons did was it brought a lot of people to Ottawa uh, and really helped solidify the animation base here. And uh, the show has gone on to uh, syndication and it's, it's spread all over the world now. And you'll find it in all sorts of corners of the world. And, and the people who used to work on it as well have gone on to all sorts of different projects from, uh, you know, from the Far Orient, the Far East to, uh, to Disney. So it's, it's, it was a beginning for a lot of people.